software is now disrupting money, you said. Can you give us an example of how it's doing that? Absolutely. So Bitcoin, uh, if, if, if you go back and read the white paper, it's a fundamentally disruptive white paper. It talks about a global peer to peer currency. Bitcoin, and what I'm about to say is somewhat controversial, and I'm probably going to get chewed up for this on the internet, uh, but uh, it's really failed to deliver on that mission. Bitcoin today is not a peer-to-peer -peer currency. It's a fantastic store of value. Bitcoin, due to its, uh, due to its technical uh, structure, is, it'll never do more than 7 to 12 transactions per second. We're never going to go purchase Starbucks with Bitcoin. We're never going to go, you know, send micro payments every time you read a news article on the Wall Street Journal or uh, watch something on Kitco every time you stream a video. Uh, it's really become a way to preserve wealth. There's only 21 million Bitcoin by the year 2140. All 21 million will have been created. Uh, but it's not it's not a currency that we're using. It's really just gold 2.0. And I'm not the only one saying that. Stanley Druckenmiller, Ray Dalio, uh, you'll hear those talking points from Paul Tudor Jones as well. And, and, and I believe everyone needs Bitcoin in their portfolio, but as a means of investment and as a means of preserving wealth. There will be other coins like USDC. This is a stable coin meant to be uh, held stable to the US dollar. USDC uh, is a great uh, coin that can be used for anything within the context of DeFi. It can be used for angel investing. I personally have made angel investments in USDC. Um, and uh, in some cases, people even uh, transact in day-to-day -day commerce in USDC, purchasing things on the internet. Just on your point, and uh, we'll move on to um, other blockchains. Just on your point about uh, Bitcoin's slow transaction speed, you're absolutely right. Bitcoin itself is uh, arguably failed as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction system protocol. But don't we have now second layer payment protocols like Lightning that are supposed to be enhancing that aspect? Absolutely. And those those definitely enhance the user experience, the end user experience. We do sacrifice to gain performance. We do sacrifice uh, decentralization. We become more centralized with it. Uh, every single time I've ever spent a Bitcoin, David, I've regretted spending that Bitcoin. So I think it's a really bad idea to go purchase Starbucks with Bitcoin. I purchased a house a little more than a year ago. I used a little bit of Bitcoin. The, per the person I purchased a house from uh, happened to be a crypto native person. Uh, I did that when Bitcoin was $8,000. He got a much better deal on the house than I did because I'll tell you, my house is not eight times in value the way that Bitcoin has. So um, I, I, I would highly uh, argue that your users should not be purchasing day to day uh, goods with their Bitcoin, but instead well, that, should be holding and storing that Bitcoin. That that the underlying assumption to that statement that you should not be purchasing everyday items like Starbucks with your Bitcoin rests on the uh, rests on the assumption that Bitcoin will dramatically appreciate in value uh, even from today's levels, right? So I'll just ask you straight up: well, how how far is it going to go up? <laughs> Uh, how much it, room it, we got to, room, to climb here, you, Jordan? You're, you're right, David. I am making that assumption, and I fundamentally believe that. I, I hold a disproportionate amount of my wealth still in cryptocurrency. I will continue to do so. I believe we're really just getting started. I think we've got tremendous room to the upside. If Bitcoin really is gold 2.0, let's take a look at gold. Gold's what, a $10, $11 trillion uh, global market? Uh, when you compare that to the 21 million Bitcoin that will exist, uh, today, we're only at 50,000. I think if I uh, glance over here, it's about 54,800 at the time that uh, we're recording this. Uh, I believe that we'll see gold uh, at least meet the current market for, uh, for, for, for gold, traditional gold. So if you, if you do the price comp, you're talking about half a million dollars per Bitcoin. But it's not just gold. It's gold 2.0. It's a better form of gold. You can take it across borders with it. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's got, it's got sound trust properties in it. It's immutable, uh, like the name of our company. We named it after the technology. Uh, I really think we could see half a million dollars to a million dollar Bitcoin and I'm betting on it myself. We're advising our investors to bet on it as well. I've heard a million dollar Bitcoin. I mean, I, let, let me just, let me just touch on that. So a million dollar Bitcoin, let's assume by then, uh, most of the 21 million coins would have been mined. So a million dollars times 21 million, that's greater than 21 trillion, that's larger than the economy of the US. So you, basically what you're, what you're suggesting is uh, down the line, the market cap of Bitcoin, this, this gold 2.0 is gonna be worth more than the output of the United States economy today. I believe that a huge amount of wealth on the internet today, when you look at a generation of people growing up, when you look at it in the context of a four or five year old, these are internet native kids that are going to laugh at the fact that we used to have paper money and used to conduct commerce using fiat uh, fiat money. 
the wow. the concept of internet money for those that have, are growing up in a world that are internet native will get used to holding all value in these internet native tokens. I don't think it's out of I, I don't think it's it's uh, uh, unrealistic at all that we'll see twenty one trillion dollars or more in wealth held in a digital asset like Bitcoin. And I do think Bitcoin is going to be the big winner here. I think there will be other protocols that win, but but Bitcoin is going to capture most of that value. <laughs>